Welcome to the insane laughing stock that is Mega Man X6. Let's rock out with Blizzard Wolfang. Wolfing was the leader of a Sub-Zero environment land development team and was trusted among his subordinates because of his responsible and level-headed approach to crises. Wolfing's duties brought him to the North Pole on occasion. Then one day, his team members were attacked by Mavericks and were all killed, except Wolfang. He managed to kill all the aggressing Mavericks himself? Man, he's a badass. And sometime after that, researchers who opposed Gate took advantage of the incident and schemed to depose of Wolfang under the justification that he had gone Maverick himself and was responsible for the killing of his teammates. Deceiving Alia into throwing him into a cold sea and making it look like an accident. Wait, so wait, is Alia just killing people? This is the second Maverick she's offed. That's different. Oh, where am I at? Um, okay. Blizzard and the Maverick Hunter Zero were acquainted. Zero was aware of the truth behind Wolfang's demise despite the cover-up. Gate eventually revived Wolfang, I'm sensing a pattern with all these revivals, and made him a part of the investigation team. He was sent to the North Pole area to investigate the nightmare-induced avalanches and other particular or peculiar activity. And that's Blizzard Buffalo in a nutshell. Oh. Good thing I survived that. Um, in the ice area, you cannot wall jump for some reason. I guess because everything is all slick. But that's also stupid because in earlier games, you can jump off of ice just fine. This is just X6 in particular being goddamn hard for no reason. Anyway, we got the foot part for whatever armor I'm collecting for. I, I don't even know at this point. This game is just hurting me now. <laughs> And Blizzard Wolfang stage is not the worst ice stage I've ever played, but it is really, really insane. Whatever you do, do not play this stage with the nightmare effect on, or just whenever the stage is highlighted in red on the stage select, do not go there. No pun intended, the stage is an actual nightmare with the effect on. Oh, and speaking of nightmares, the ice blocks. These ice blocks are completely random. So it's kind of like Castlevania 3 on the Alucard route, where you have these falling blocks, but you can predict those because they just fall in a set pattern. These, however, no, they don't. They fall wherever they please, and you could potentially get fucked up for it. Somehow managed to survive that. Here's a blind jump in the spikes right here. Thanks, X6, you lovely, lovely game. Can I get the doggo? Good, I got the doggo. Ouch! Even the way you get crushed by these ice cubes is inconsistent. Sometimes a fourth of your health bar drains if you touch an ice cube, other times you die instantly. Makes no sense. And so does this. What is happening here? Um, ice cubes? Ice cube? Yes, that ice cube. Anybody? Hello? Help me out here? Help a brother out, I gotta kill Sigma. Again, for the sixth time. Uh, things are looking up. Things are. Lo oh no, I'm scared. It's over. It's over. Oh no, there's a platform there. There's still hope. There's still hope. Oh fuck! <laughs> what the hell? That's not the end of the trolliness, the trolly nature that is Mega Man X6. There's there's way more to it, including this part. Admittedly, this um this section is not as bad as the previous part, but it's still shitty. You have to snake your way through ice platforms, and if you get trapped in the ice platform that's open but it closes in on you, you die instantly. But, if you get crushed by the ice, you still survive, but you take a lot of damage. It's pretty confusing. You get crushed directly, you just lose a bit of health. You get crushed indirectly, or encased in ice, you just die. Okay. And yes, I am wasting my lives just so I can save the doggos. Operation Free Fido is in full effect in this bitch. I have no problem destroying myself for this dog. Or dogs, plural. There are just too many damn dogs in this game. Why are there so many dogs in Mega Man X6? As well as Tara Branford lookalikes. Why is Tara Branford even in X6 to begin with? That's my main question. And here's where I give up on the boss strategies and just decided to dash to win because I, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> I really don't. This game sucks. If this were X1 or X2, I would be doing a Buster only run, but this game doesn't deserve that much respect. Because it doesn't respect me. 
I do respect the soundtrack though. X6 is one of the better soundtracks in the series. Or at least it's my personal favorite. I wouldn't say it's the best sounding soundtrack in the series. I say X4 sounds, um, for lack of better words, diverse, more diverse than X6, but um, music in X6 can be a banger sometimes. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Music is a banger. <laughs> it's definitely better than X5 soundtrack. Other than Squid Atler's theme, I cannot remember a single tune. And for our troubles, we have now obtained the Ice Burst. The normal Ice Burst is just Mega Man shooting a snowball. It's nothing particularly damaging or even good. <laughs> but if you charge the weapon up, it shoots spikes vertically. It's decent, I guess. The Ice Burst is mainly just a platforming device, that's it. The charged version of the Ice Burst can be useful, but it also leaves you vulnerable to attack. Anyway, my next target is going to be Shield Sheldon. Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, basically. He sucks. And we're gonna kill him. <laughs> Shield Sheldon. He was created by Gate to serve as a bodyguard for important people who had VIP status. Sheldon has such an impeccable service record in protecting his charges that he was highly sought after for bodyguard service, leading to him often protecting top flight researchers belonging to well-funded science organizations. Sheldon was an elite bodyguard, but not even he could prevent Dr. Jim, whoever the fuck that is, a laser researcher he was protecting suddenly going, going maverick. However, Dr. Jim, still whoever the fuck that is, was able to control himself. Nevertheless, Sheldon still felt it necessary to dispose of Jim because of his corruption. But his actions were misinterpreted by the Maverick Hunters that arrived on the scene, and he was charged as a Maverick himself. He could not deal with the stress and shame of the incident and decided to take his own life, believing that he was useless. In the Japanese version, Rockman X6, it was not mentioned that Dr. Jim, I still don't know who this guy is, it was not mentioned that he was um, still in control of himself. But it was mentioned that Sheldon was always calm and he had no choice but to dispose of Jim in this situation. And then of course in this game he was resurrected by Gate to observe the nightmare effects and all that stuff. Uh, seeing this as a second chance, he tries to fulfill his destiny as a bodyguard protecting Gate. And I did just completely talk over that stage in question, but don't worry, we're gonna go over the stage again because there's more to it than that. Bazinga. Fuck you, Sheldon. Fuck you. Now, Shield Sheldon is one of the harder bosses to take on because of his shields. Hence the name, Shield Sheldon. But that's not it. He likes to teleport all over the place and he's airborne, which further adds to the annoyance factor. There's also this move where he bounces around the room like Armored Armadillo from Mega Man X1. Except way faster than Armadillo ever did. It seems like Sheldon is way more consistent on the timing of the bouncing, too. Another desperation attack is him throwing his two clamshells at you from two different forms. And when Sheldon gets to low health, he'll start to play more defensively. Sheldon will form four ray shields around him and float towards you. Slowly, but you still got the ray shield, so you have to shoot those down in order to take him out. The next weapon in our arsenal is Guard Shell. This can be a useful item, especially if you choose to play as Zero. It puts a ray shield in front of the character which will damage enemies that come into contact. Like I said before, the Guard Shield is probably more beneficial for Zero's moveset. The reason is you can actually glitch the enemy's hitboxes as Zero with the Guard Shield and you can do massive damage that way. But getting back to Shield Sheldon's stage, what you want to go, or what you want to do is go down here. To the right is where the boss fight is. And with that said, this would probably be a top contender for the shortest stage in Mega Man history. But fortunately, there is more. Unfortunately, this part is annoying and tedious. So here's what you want to do. You want to turn the mirrors in the right direction so that the lasers go where you want them to go. It's self-explanatory, but the lasers can actually hurt you. Granted, it doesn't do that much damage, but it's annoying to get knocked back. 
So minor inconvenience? Oh hell yes, <laughs> this is a really big minor inconvenience. But worst stage in the game? Not even close. You still got Metal Shark player. And plays Heat next. Oh god, no, not that guy. But I will say that this stage has a bit of trickery that will make a Zelda game blush. Look at that! Was that wall really supposed to be as inconspicuous as it looks? Because that's actually pretty genius, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> However, getting over here is the rough part as you need the speedster upgrade, or just dash over the pit with the ultimate armor. That works too. I really can't believe the developers designed the wall like that. That's pretty cool, but it's also really, really mean at the same time. Especially this section with the heart tank on the spikes. What you're really supposed to do is get the armor for the spikes and come back, but here I just use the iframes and just take the hit, so... No love lost there! Just another way you can sequence break in Mega Man X6. That guy is saved. Wait a minute, is that what's-his-face from Mighty No. 9? Back or whatever his name is, is that that dude? Because <laughs> it looks like him. Uh, oh well, it doesn't matter. And for those two guys, I'm, I'm just gonna have to wait until I get the spike armor. Unless I feel like purposefully driving myself into the spikes. But I'm only willing to do that for the dogs, not so much the human reploids. The humans know better than to get themselves into these situations, so fuck them. <laughs> The reason why I'm taking this secret passage is so that I can fight Hymax. He's a doozy. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's get this over with, because this boss fight's going to take a while. The goal of Hymax is to hit him with your charged Mega Buster shot, and then hit him with a special weapon. The problem is, there's a small window of opportunity to actually hit him with the damaging shot. It also doesn't help that some of his attacks, like that one, just gives him iframes so that your charge attacks don't count against him. So it's a test of patience. But not a very good one at that. The best weapon you can use for Hymax, or the special weapon I mean, is I say the ground dash. It seems to work well and it goes up into the air enough. Every other weapon I have at the moment is sort of unreliable for this fight. And look at the damage output. I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> so yeah, he's got laser balls. He can dash into you like a maniac when you're least expecting it. What, what else can go wrong? Oh, that move. I hate that move. Just take the L, Hymax. You don't have to do this. Or maybe you do have to do this because you're fighting for something. What you're fighting for, I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't even care. I did not think to try it on this boss fight, but I don't... I'm not sure if the Giga Crush works on Hymax. The Giga Crush for the ultimate armor being the dash attack. I'm not sure if that works against him. Ow. Rude ass. Uh, ugh. I don't hate this boss fight, but why are there so many parameters just to damage him? And why does he have so much freaking health? This is honestly final boss worthy, or at least the first form of a final boss. Like, holy crap. I'm telling you right now, Sigma is nowhere near as hard as this guy. It's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. But when Hymax gets to low health, that's when things get pretty dangerous. Very dangerous. But at the same time, you can shoot him freely when he's in desperation mode, so it's kind of even. The main threat is just him doing a lot of damage in a couple of shots. He should be going into his final phase right about now. Right? No? Uh, okay, I still got a couple more shots left. It's hard to tell because the health bar is so goddamn huge. Right around here, I'd say. IMAX will fly to the center of the screen and shoot homing shots. Well, not homing shots in the sense that they chase you around the screen, they just track to your current location. Yeah, you see, they just go in a straight line after they track you. But as you can see, IMAX is a pretty big dude. 
and there's barely enough space to dodge around the balls. Yes, spark balls, I know. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be the end of this part. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and I'll see you later. Okay.